Would you give viewers and fans a look inside how you visualized Enola and company during the writing of this series? For instance, did you do character sketches with different fashions and styles of the times to fit with different scenes? And uh, yes, I'm extremely visual as a writer. This is what I did for research for Enola. One of the things I uh, cut these, well, I had a costume book and I took photocopies from it and cut them out and colored them and pasted them onto sheets of paper that went up around my office there. That's better. And then there was the Victorian paper dolls I, and the Victorian coloring book. One more, yeah, there's, there's Enola's room. Wow. And the Victorian street life. Thank goodness, thank goodness for uh, Dover Publications. Yeah. And my everything book. Let's see if I can find a good page. Uh, just looking, well, whatever. Yeah, visual. I don't know where I got that circular picture, but it's uh, kind of amazing. It's amazing that you're sharing so much with viewers and fans about how your process works in the writing room. Thank you so much again. Is this basically Enola's ongoing source book that you keep adding to with new volumes in her story? Language of Flowers. And this whole thing, I'm still going. I mean, I found this at a thrift shop. I was volunteering and I grabbed, but that's how far, that's how far we are and still going. It is so uh, Enola. It is, you know, it's perfect. I started out in a standard three ring notebook, but when I saw that, I knew it all had to go in there and it did. That'll be worth a million bucks at auction one day. When you finally got word that Enola was heading to the big screen, how skeptical were you that she'd actually make it there? So many people we talk to that start out with a book series that get optioned, it never quite always gets there. Some do, but some don't. It was purely amazing. Now, as you said, it was a long time coming. Throughout my career, I've sold film options and nothing ever came of them. And I was beginning to get a bit cynical. This whole thing was very different. It wasn't Netflix to start with, by the way. It was, uh, it was legendary. Uh, and it was supposed to be a feature film in the theaters. But uh, it all started, actually, not up with the CEO of a, of a film company, but with a little girl named Millie Bobby Brown. She read the Sherlock, I'm sorry, she read the Enola Holmes books. She liked them. Actually, her older sister, Paige, read them first and passed them on. And then Millie Bobby Brown, who was right, I think, just about at the peak of her success in Stranger Things, said, I want to do these as a movie, and it's going to be my first starring role in a feature film, and it's going to be in movie theaters, and we're going to have a premiere, and all the rest of it. It was her idea. She's the producer. And she, at the age of 16, played the leading role. So, so she is the phenomenon there. I'm, I'm just like, the first contact my agent had was from Millie Bobby Brown's father. And uh, after a while down the road, all I was told at first was that there was a young actress with the uh, prestige who was who is interested. And after a while, I learned a little bit more and a little bit more. And finally, as I said, Legendary picked it up. And uh, I got to go to London and meet Millie, give her a big hug and uh, meet some of the other actors and see some of the filming. And it was one of the foremost experiences of my life. That was in the summer of 2019. Uh, then, of course, came COVID. So uh, the the movie couldn't be released. Uh, it was in limbo and then Netflix blessedly picked it up. And it's been enormously successful on Netflix because of Netflix, I think, and, and because of COVID and everybody's needing something lighthearted and larky to watch at the height of COVID. Um, I've had the re most remarkable luck.
incredible. Oh. Good luck.